analyst at Moffitt Nathanson. Nick, um, I also wonder about supply issues here because it would seem that, in a sense, these data centers are competing against the mega scale cloud. Do you end up with a situation eventually, kind of like the semiconductor market, where if there's a big fab build out, eventually it affects uh, the pricing? Well, you know, it, uh, the answer is it depends. It depends on the niche and it depends on the, uh, on, on the players, right? So broadly speaking, you know, the data center market can be bifurcated into two pieces. You've got network dense interconnection oriented operators on lines of Equinix or Foresight or parts of digital realties business. And they have folks who cater to some of the larger scale deployments that the hyperscalers uh, need to put out there, like Cyrus One, parts of digital realties business or QTS. When the, when the hyperscalers build their own facilities, like Google built its own data center, or, or Facebook or what have you, uh, that can certainly substitute for leasing activity that would otherwise go to some of the public players. But again, it tends to be focused in, uh, in that part of the market as opposed to the interconnection oriented area. How deep do you dig and look at exactly where these companies are building out their facilities? Because costs are going to be different depending on how much they have to pay for power, how great the network connectivity is in that geography. I mean, I guess there's a reason why Virginia is such a possible, uh, popular spot. Yeah, Northern Virginia is the largest data center market in the world for a variety of reasons. Land is inexpensive and plentiful. There's a ton of connectivity. Power is cheap. Uh, natural disaster risk is low. There's a workforce uh, that, that's trained to promote these assets. The tax environment is favorable. So, you know, those things tend to, um, you know, tends to snowball. So, you know, when, when people tend to go big in an area, it tends to attract more, uh, you know, more construction. And, and Northern Virginia is sort of the, uh, the prototypical example of that. So what determines which of these stocks, you know, CoreSight, Equinix, Cyrus One, Digital Realty, QTS, et cetera, over the long term, get the, the benefit of the doubt on valuation? Well, what are the performance metrics and factors that investors should think about? I prefer to look at return on invested capital. Again, these are very capital intensive businesses, so it's very important to understand the ability of the businesses to translate the significant growth that they're seeing into value and specifically value per share. If you look at, you know, call it an Equinix or a core site that operate with these interconnection oriented network dense assets, uh, those facilities are hard to, hard to replicate. Um, so they, they get a measure of pricing power and premium returns that other players in the space uh, can't achieve. And I think as a result, they tend to convert growth into value at a higher cadence and warrant higher multiples. You know, in contrast, when you look at most other players, it's a little more challenging for them to convert that growth into value. So in terms of our preferences, uh, you know, we, have, uh, we, we prefer Aquinix and Foresight. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.